Hello, everybody, and welcome to Handmade Hero, Sure, we could a complete game live on stream. I just wanted to take a few minutes uh, at the start of the stream to discuss a fairly typical thing that tends to happen on Twitter, and I seriously doubt that me making a video about it will help at all, but, you know, since it's kind of always been a problem and it gets to the point now where I'm just so aggravated with it that you know, and I think most people are so aggravated with it that it it ends up meaning that folks who actually are serious about programming or spend a lot of their time thinking about problems and caring about how good software is, they eventually will just disengage, right? I mean, nowadays, most of my interaction with Twitter is just blocking people. Like, I just, you know, I see so much, like, ignorance and arrogance and stuff on there that I just, like, I block basically, like, you know, 50% of the things I see, because I'm just like, this is ridiculous and, and pointless, right? Um, but I don't actually know to what extent it's a lost cause, because, I mean, to a certain extent, you know, what, uh, just trying to put my, myself, my mind back into, like, what I would have done, you know, when I was, you know, 14 or something, if I had been on Twitter... I'm sure I would have been a disaster, right? I already still get angry at things and post things on Twitter where I'm, like, upset about stuff, right? Even today. Uh, and I'm, you know, 43 at this point. And, you know, uh, I certainly uh, haven't gotten more impulsive as I've gotten older. You know, if anything, I've gotten less. So... All I want to do was basically point out that if you're talking to somebody who's a professional, who has a lot of years of experience, and who does a lot of work on things on Twitter, if you're assuming something about them, like that they don't know X, you're almost certainly wrong. Now, it's not that you're always wrong, because there's definitely things that they don't know. And there's plenty of things that I don't know. I mean, like I've mentioned many times, you know, there's people like Jeff and Fabian and stuff like that, who when I have a question, I ask them, right, about things that I know, like, oh, if this is going to be like some kind of a like algorithmic optimization thing, I'm going to ask Jeff about it. Uh, if it's some kind of a, a microarchitecture thing, I'm going to ask Fabian, right, because they just spend way more time with these things than I do, and I know they know more, right? So it's not like I know everything because I actually know very little, right? But I know a lot more than some random person arriving on my Twitter feed appears to think that I do. And that's the annoying part, right? Like, I'm not someone who just started programming yesterday, you know? That, and that is how you end up getting treated on Twitter, even if you've been programming for an extremely long time, right? And it's super annoying because there also is no way on Twitter to explain to people that that is the case, right? It's like, look, you know, I'm not an idiot, right? I have a ton of experience. I do a ton of stuff. And you're almost certainly wrong in whatever it is that you're assuming because you're assuming something about somebody who's, like, actually really dumb, right? It's not like you were making an assumption that I, you know, don't know quantum field theory. You're making an assumption that I don't even know basic things about development environments where, you know, I've used every version of that development environment that you're talking about or something, right? So just to take a simple example, I want to show what this kind of looks like. So here's something from my Twitter feed, and I was basically just telling people you should use Remedy BG, and I basically was pointing out that it debugs much faster than Video Studio, and it's a single executable, so there's no installation nightmares, right? Now, those are the two things that are the major problems with debugging on Visual Studio. Are there some features that I wish Visual Studio had? Sure. If you go look at something like WinDBG, which is probably the most fully featured debugger that I've ever seen, um, Visual Studio is, you know, a toy by comparison. But to that end, so is RemedyBG, right? RemedyBG and Visual Studio don't have even 20% of the features of WinDBG. The reason for that is WinDBG is a super hardcore kernel debugger style thing made for finding errors that are super crazy hard to find, and it's got years and years and years of developer plugins that hardcore developers have made for handling incredibly esoteric stuff. It's also impossible to use. The interface is terrible. There are so many bad mistakes and bugs in the interface that it's just like you'd never want to use it as your day-to-day -day debugger if you care about the speed and ease with which you can debug, right? 
So yes, WinDBG, it's what I use to debug if I have a really serious problem on my hands. But that happens once every six months. All other times, Remedy BG. It has all the features that I need. It's extremely fast. It's trivial to install. It loads instantly and runs instantly, updates the watch window, and so it's great, right? Visual Studio is none of those things. It's an incredibly bloated uh, install that you know usually fails. I've had it fail about you know six times total uh, in the past maybe five years of installations, right? And that's just like updates or reinstalls or whatever. It's incredibly slow to launch. It takes forever to bring up, you know, a window, even if there's your, even if you have nothing in your project, which you'll, you'll see you later. Um, and it's incredibly slow. It's just super slow. Every every operation you do is incredibly slow in it. Uh, for a number, because of a number of decisions that that they made when they were developing it, that you know I don't really agree with. And it's just it is where it is. And the default install is what it is. So that's just the truth of installing Visual Studio. Now, for whatever reason, and I don't actually know what it is, um, you know, people think that that must just not be true. Like I, I, like, I guess they just think that I don't know that. I, I don't know, and this is one of the weird things about Twitter. I'm not sure how somebody can actually not agree with what I said, honestly, because it's just, you just run it. Like you don't have to do anything. It's, it's not like I'm talking about some incredibly esoteric aspect of, you know, the coronavirus's molecular structure and I'm a programmer and they're like, wow, this guy's an idiot. Doesn't even know basic immunology or something, right? Like this is not some esoteric off, like off expertise, uh, weird, you know, figment of my imagination that it's like, wow, well, where's this guy coming from, right? This is just something that anyone can reproduce trivially on any machine at any time, right? You don't have to do anything. Uh, it's just obvious to anyone who wants to run it with a stopwatch, right? So it's weird to me that this even ever happens, but apparently it does. And so here is the kind of comment I'm very used to seeing on Twitter now. And it's like, my point is that if you don't use it anymore, you won't know that it's better. So first of all, that assumes I don't use it anymore, but of course I do. Uh, there are very few cases where a Windows developer can avoid using Visual Studio. At the very least, you will have to encounter it because you'll use it on other devs' machines or you'll see other devs using it because it's ubiquitous. It's the most popular programming environment in the world at the current moment, right? So of course you're gonna see it if you're a professional developer. There's no way that's not gonna happen. And two, I'm an educator. Not only do I do Handmade Hero all the time, but I also work on course materials which are coming out and so on. I have to teach Visual Studio. So I used it all last week for recording tutorial videos, for example. I literally have used the latest version of Visual Studio, the, like the latest point release of Visual Studio I used on Thursday. <laughs> so I don't know why you would assume, assume this about somebody, I have no idea, but if you did, you could check first. You could say, have you used the latest point release? That's an example, right, of what you could do if you were civil. But of course they don't, they just assume, well, this person must not have used it because I guess, I mean, I don't know, right? I can't get into the mind of somebody who is delusional in this way, but then they say, he's clearly not aware of the new features and speed of the latest version and never cared to fill an incident report. So now we're also assuming, A, I've never filed an incident report, how would they know that? Anyone? Because I don't know. I have no idea whether they would know whether I filed an incident report or not, right? And they say he's clearly not aware of new features and speed. What new features and speed? I, I don't know of any new features and speed that are germane to what I'm talking about, right? New features, I was comp complaining about the speed of debugging pretty much exclusively and the install problems. Those are not features. And speed of the latest version, the latest version is as slow as it's ever been, right? So let's just take these two in turn. New features and speed of the latest version. Well, all right. Actually, you know what? Let's take them in reverse order, shall we? Because I think that'll be more interesting. So let's talk about never care to fill out an incident report. Now, there is one thing that's true about this. In the past, let's say two years, I have not filled out an incident report for Visual Studio. The reason for that is because I used to fill out incident reports for Visual Studio. In fact, I used to do a lot more than fill out incident reports for Visual Studio, as you'll see in a minute. They don't care. 
They don't care about your incident reports. They don't care about anything I have to say. That much is clear because I've said so many things about Visual Studio in incident reports and on actual videos that you can go watch that exist online that there's no way they don't know what I think about Visual Studio if they cared. The truth is they don't care, so I don't bother anymore. But I used to. Here you go. This is an example of them contacting me because I filled out one of the online things that they let you fill out so that I could complain about the load time. Here you go. This is them contacting me back, okay? They're saying, hey, how long does the solution take for you to load and what did you actually expect, right? They're asking me about one of the things. Now, I complained about many things in this survey. They didn't care about any of those complaints at all. They only asked about this one. Okay, so uh, as I often do, every time they ask for feedback, I put everything in there up until, like I said, about two years ago, I just gave up. And this, by the way, is the incident that made me give up. But anyway, so I replied, as you would expect. I said, look, I don't have anything in my solutions. It's just an executable, right? I, I don't even develop inside Visual Studio. So when I launch Visual Studio, all it's doing is loading up a project file that's, you know, it just has one thing in it. Here's the exe and here's the, the path. It doesn't even have settings, right? It doesn't have like all the settings pages or any of that stuff. It doesn't have build instructions. It doesn't have anything, right? All it has is just the exe and then the list of source files that, that were up in the window at that time, right? And I did better than that. I said, here's a video. You could go watch it. Right? I mean, what's better for a dev than to watch the actual thing happen? They don't have to take my word for it, right? And this is on a machine with an M2 drive. It's blisteringly fast, right? So it's unclear how they, I don't even know how they make it as slow as they do, but they do, right? So I sent this back to them. They were so interested, apparently, in this that they wanted to talk on the phone. Now, I'm very busy, okay? I have literally five projects that I'm working on right now, and that's typical for me. I don't have any time to spare, okay? When I do have time to spare, I'm like streaming Handmade Hero or something, okay? So I, there's no, I don't have time to talk to Visual Studio about how bad their product is, especially because they should know, right? They should know these things. If they were developers who understood how actual computers work, they would know that these things are slow, right? And they would fix them. So I'm kind of explaining really basic stuff to them at this point. I don't really have time for that, but I'm like, okay. If you're making the effort to actually talk to me about this, the least I can do is have a phone conversation with you and explain as whatever it is that you want me to explain. I, I didn't really know. In fact, I didn't show the email here because it's redundant, but I actually emailed them like, what do you want to talk about? I mean, it's just really slow. I, 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 don't, don't you see that, right? Uh, and so we had the phone conversation and they were like, okay, uh, we'd like a, a trace of this thing, uh, of your solution, which is like a thing you can submit uh, that, uh, you know, I guess they thought it might help. But it's just, the weird thing about that is they don't, shouldn't need that because you can, this happens no matter what you do. You, all you have to do is just make an, uh, just debug an exe with Visual Studio. It's, it's slow no matter what you do. So you shouldn't actually need a trace of anything, but I'm like, okay. But they said, could you take it with the latest version? So I tried to install the latest version and it completely failed. It errored out on just the upgrade, right? Just the upgrade. And I'm like, this is what happened. So I, I don't imagine these things. These, they really don't work. Like Visual Studio just does not work. A tremendously large percentage of the time, it can't even install itself, right? It can't even do that. And here's the proof. Like I'm writing this person, I'm like, you told me to run the update. I tried, it completely failed, right? And then I tried to say, you know, you should do something about that, right? So here's another incident report directly. It's a mail to the dev team, a person I'm talking to. It's not even like a, a bug report that I'm filing into the ether. This is a human being. I sent the literal explanation of what happened to them, okay? None of this has changed. I tried to install Visual Studio a couple weeks ago, same exact problem. It just dies on install. I had to wipe the whole thing and reinstall. It, it, it will never be fixed. Just trust me, it's never gonna be fixed. I will install Visual Studio in 10 years for some purpose and it will still fail like 20% of the time, right? Okay, so then 
we get to you know the response to that, right? So so here's me sending some stuff. I send, hey, I you know had to reinstall it, and I just wanted to let you know that. You notice they completely don't care, right? They just do not care. They basically ignored everything I say here. They don't respond to it even at all. They just go back to the original thing that they were working on, which is faster solution load time. That was what they originally contacted me on, right? Now, I don't know why they did that. Maybe the reason for that is that this is Microsoft and you know, you're a project manager and you get a thing that's like, your job is going to be to improve the solution load time. And so the only thing on your mind is improving solution load time. You don't care that the program can't install itself, right? But like that was your charge. So, and that's what you're going to get evaluated on come you know, review time. So that's what you're doing. Totally reasonable, right? That's not this dude's fault. That may be just what, you know, he's told to do. And, you know, in a large corporation, it's not exactly a good idea to go around going rogue, right? So maybe. But the point is, from the perspective of the, you know, arrogant Twitter post from before, this is what I deal with. I send people, I send everybody complete descriptions of everything that's going wrong. I send them videos of what's going wrong. They don't care. That's the part that I think people are missing. They ignore me, okay? Which is fine. It's their prerogative to ignore me. But it's not my fault anymore, right? So you can't blame this on me because I'm not filling out something. I try every possible thing I can. And I think that's true of most people you see complaining about these things. We don't just show up one day and start complaining. It's been years of us trying to get these things fixed, and they never get fixed. We talk to the devs in person. We're connected. We have networking. We know people at these companies. It does not matter. They don't care. And the reasons that they don't care are beyond me. I don't know what they are. They may be very valid. It just may not be interesting product things to fix these problems, okay? That's totally fair. But don't blame me. What I'm saying is true, and I have tried. Everything I've ever complained about, I tried to have them fix it. They don't care. This is true of Microsoft. This is true of Google. This is true of any service I've ever complained about. I send them everything. Stripe, they just don't care. That's what you have to understand. They don't care. So I give up. I give up eventually. And that's what I did here. They said, can you please fill out this questionnaire? I did. I filled out the questionnaire. Stupid me. And you'll never guess what the first thing on this questionnaire was. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Because it was a questionnaire just about workspace loading times. I filled it out. You want to know what the first question on the questionnaire was? I think it was the first question on the questionnaire. It was how long do you expect it should take your solution to load? It's an M2 drive on this machine, okay? Do you have any idea how fast an M2 drive is? Do you have any idea how fast it is? An M2 drive is so fast that it could load the project and all of the source files for Handmade Hero not just 10 times a second or 100 times a second, but like thousands or tens of thousands of times a second. Not in the cache. So basically you have whatever latency you have through the read pipe, which is pretty darn low on Windows, and that's it. Then from there, no matter how big the project is, it will be in memory if you knew what you were doing, okay? It's blazingly fast. And this is loading. Literally, I mean, look, this is what it had to load. It has to load this. One point five megabytes. Right? That's what we've got. 1.5 megabytes is like a crumb on the side of the dish of an M2 drives dinner. Okay? 
it doesn't even know what 1.5 megabytes is. It will serve 1.5 megabytes before it even wakes up in the morning, all right? It's nothing. So the only excuse for taking a long time to load is extremely poor programming that's just doing a bunch of things it doesn't have to do and extremely bloated program because it's got to load whatever, right? Like all of the crazy 50,000 DLLs and SQL server connections or spurious socket checks or looking for different versions or all the other things they're doing. That's what's taking the time. It's not loading my project. So when you ask me how long should my pro program take, should my workspace take to load, no time, zero seconds. The smallest number you could pick was less than 10 seconds. That phrase, less than 10 seconds. So like nine seconds to them is the fastest possible thing a user might want. Like anywhere up to 10. I mean, look, if your thing loads in 10 seconds, it's pretty darn fast, right? Are you kidding me? What are you talking about? I don't even know how to assess that. I mean, the entire project builds in four seconds in release mode. So I can build the whole project in less time than it takes just to load the project file and the source? Are you mad? It, by the way, has to load all the source to build it. I, I, what are you talking about, right? So at that point, I was just like, look, there's some kind of like a cultural disconnect here. Somehow the Visual Studio team has no idea how a computer works or what it should be doing, right? They just, they fundamentally don't know how fast a hard drive is, what a CPU does, they just don't know, right? There's no other explanation for this because there's no plausible world in which a person who knew how computers worked would have to ask me this or would ever put that on a survey, right? Now that doesn't mean it can't happen. And it even doesn't mean it can't happen with good programmers. There's tons of times that, you know, I've done something on a project or other people have done something and it's slow, okay? Because we didn't have time to make it fast. That happens all the time. It happens to me, it happens to everyone I know, it happens to the very best programmers in the world out there. Okay. There's a difference between doing a bad job on something and knowing you did and doing a bad job on something and thinking that there isn't a better way to even have done it, right? There's a fundamental lack of awareness there that's like, I, I mean, I can't go teach them to program. I mean, maybe I could, I don't know. Microsoft, do you want to pay me to come teach the Visual Studio program? I can try. But at some point, what we've done here is we've moved from customer feedback to like I'm an educator about how a CPU works and how a drive works or something, right? And at that point, I just give up. What, what do you want me to do? I, and, and furthermore, I do have these learning materials on the drive. We have streaming in Handmade Hero. I showed how to load things off of a drive whilst you're running your program, if that takes a long time, but we also don't take a long time to load, right? So I actually already provided the things to the community that would fix these problems and would teach them not to, you know, to know that this was bad. So I do everything I can. There's not anything else I can do short of go there and try to fix it, but trust me, that's a fool's errand. If you've ever tried to go somewhere like that and you're surrounded by people who don't think this is a problem and have all kinds of other agendas, there's no way you're gonna convince them all to start programming your way, right? It doesn't work. This is a cultural problem, right? It's a corporate and CS cultural problem that you're just running headfirst into. And it's futile. Trust me, I've tried over and over and over again. So let's see. All that feedback, did you guys catch the date? I don't know if you're looking. That's 2018. It's almost a year. I'm sorry, it's almost to the it's almost to the date, right, 2018. So they had all of 2018 to 2019 and all of 2019 to 2020. They had two full years. They had a project manager, or I, I don't know what uh, Varun Gupta is, I, I'm not sure, right? Uh, maybe they're a, a dev, maybe they're a project lead I, or a project manager. 
I don't know. He spent the time to talk to me about this. I explained all these things. I filled out the surveys that they asked for. I sent them the trace uh, that they asked for, right? So let's see. How long does it take to load Handmade Hero? Any idea? Do you think it's instant? And by the way, here's how fast it, uh, here's how long it takes to load Remedy, Handmade Hero, right? Did you catch that? Do you, do you notice anything there? Zero seconds, right? Zero seconds. And it's all here. All the source files, okay? Zero seconds to load, zero seconds to load the project. Let's try developer studio, shall we? So just there, it took like a couple seconds to load just that screen, okay? Remember, instant, zero seconds. Here's loading nothing. Okay, now let's try loading the project. It's still like five or six seconds. That, I don't know what to say. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's no faster. Why did they even ask me those questions? I don't know. And so you can see exactly what I thought was true was true. Less than 10 seconds is all they can conceive of. As far as they're concerned, my project loads in less than 10 seconds at this point, so they don't care. They don't care. Now, mind you, that's with everything in the cache. That was the best possible case. I ran this just before uh, we, we got on stream to make sure I still had the project in here. So this is the best case scenario, right? That's the very best case scenario that, that you can hope for. It doesn't get any better than this, right? It doesn't get any better than this. And you can see when I switch back to it, it's not that bad, right? Like it's faster when you do it that way. So it's, it's all them. It's all just the, just the program is such a bloated mess that it takes forever to load. But you know what? Okay, whatever. Remember, all of that stuff was just one of the things I filled out on the giant survey. It's not even my number one priority at all, right? And the reason it wasn't my number one priority was because I don't have to launch Dev Studio that often. There are programmers whose workflow involves that, and this kills them. Waiting five, six seconds, and that's the best case scenario, sometimes 10, sometimes 15, to start their debugger can be a huge problem for them, right? Like, there's people like Jeff Roberts who they don't leave the debugger up. I, I've learned over time to leave the debugger up. It's just way faster that way because Visual Studio is so slow. For them, it's a huge issue. So for them, they care, right? I don't really care because if you've ever watched me uh, program uh, on stream and we won't, even when we use Visual Studio, I just leave it up, right? So it's embarrassingly slow to load, yes, but do I care about that? Not really. The things I cared about were all the other things I said in the survey how horrible the install is, that it breaks all the time, it doesn't work half the time, right? That it installs so much crap on my machine like that I don't want, right? Uh, and those sorts of issues, if you're gonna work on meta issues, uh, those are the ones I actually care about, not this load time. They didn't fix the load time, they didn't do anything to it, it's still as bad as it was, but if you were gonna focus on something that was meta, those would be my higher choices. But by far my highest choice was something I mentioned in that survey as well. And it's the number one thing I've wanted fixed forever. And it's that the default install can't update the watch window. Almost at all. It's a disaster, right? Now, what do I mean by this? Well, here's an example. Here's my program, okay? And here's me stepping through my program. This is what I want to do, right? So let's take a look here, for example, at the locals window. And I'll close everything else. We're, all we're doing, right, it only has to update this window. That's it. So let's suppose I want to know where the draw region, I just want to know when the draw region changes. That's what I want to know, right? Well, let me go ahead and step through my program and see where it changes. 
Where does the draw region change? Let's see where the draw region changes. Let's see where the draw region changes, shall we? Where does it change? Oh, I guess it just doesn't change. False. If I let go, you will see as soon as I stop, it updates the watch window. Why? Because apparently updating the watch window is such a huge time investment for them that they were worried they wouldn't be able to do it fast enough. And so they have an actual delay in there that says if the person is still stepping, don't try to update the watch window anymore. Swear to God, that's what actually happens in this program. So single stepping is useless in Developer Studio. You, you, you can't even do it unless you're going like, Now, mind you, this is uh, trivial to implement. I mean, it's not trivial, like George is a very good programmer, so I shouldn't say trivial, but a good programmer who knows what they're doing, and this is Randy BG, I'd like to point something out here. One person made Remedy BG, George Menhorn. In his spare time, okay? He has a full-time job. So one programmer, with a full-time job that is not working on a debugger, absolutely destroys every metric across the board for debugging versus Visual Studio, which is a multi-million dollar budget project at Microsoft with many developers that has been developed for decades multiple decades, it is like 30 years old. Okay, so let's see how hard it is to update the watch window, shall we? And I'll be honest, I never really use locals, which is what we were using before. So uh, let me, give me one second to check the remedy manual for how you do that because I don't ever do it. It's a thing you can put in the watch windows if you want locals. Uh, so it's something like, um, I don't know, uh, there's, there's like a watch window command and I never use it. I just don't use locals. I just use regular watch. Um, let's see here. I think this is it. So there's the locals. And uh, here's the draw region, right? So let's take a look at when the draw region changes, shall we? When does the draw region change? When does the draw region change? Let's see. When does the draw region change? When does the draw region change? This song is helpful. Oops, I can't see it anymore. When does the draw region change? There it is. So there you go. Now you know when the draw region changes. It's right there. So, <clears throat> hopefully that gives you some perspective about what I'm talking about, about how bad this stuff is, and how a conscientious programmer who knows what they're doing just does it, right? Now, nobody had to explain that to George. I didn't have to fill out an incident report. I didn't have to spend an hour on the phone with him explaining that a watch window should generally update immediately because it's only a tiny fraction of the screen. A computer can trivially do this. All it has to do is see what's in that side of the window, go grab that process memory using tool help or whatever other way you want to read process memory, you do that, and then you display it. That's it. It's not that hard, right? And it's not trivial. You have to be a good programmer, and George is. But it's obvious that you can do it at speed for any situation, right? For any situation. And if there is a problem where you're like, oh, yeah, well, we have TCP IP debugging sometimes, so sometimes we have to wait for, like, a packet to come back so we can't display it right away, totally fine. Don't ruin the entire program for that case. It should still step instantly in all other cases because it can. It's the same machine, the same memory, right? Now, spoiler warning for you all. I wasn't planning to go into this, but because this ended up being pretty long. Spoiler warning. 
a lot of times uh, people want to know, you know, uh, and I, and I want to say John even talked about this. Uh, in fact, you know what? There was a stream yesterday. Here, here's, you know what? I, I actually remember this. There was actually a stream yesterday where Jonathan Blow, uh, right, the developer who's working on JAI, the language, he made Braid, made The Witness, right? I was talking to Sean Barrett, who's the person who made the STB libraries, did the renderer for Thief, the Dark project. These, these are people who really know programming, okay? One thing they said was that their superpower is that they're old. <laughs> and being old, they remember when computers were fast, which is ironic because computers are faster today than they were then. But what they mean is when software actually ran at a reasonable speed on the hardware that it had, right? So let me help you out, those of you who weren't there, okay? Who weren't there. Let me do you a favor. This is a recording, okay? It's a recording of a machine from 2003 that I resurrected. I still have the machine, okay? This is it. It's still running Windows XP because that was the latest operating system at the time, okay? This is Developer Studio running on a 20-year-old machine, okay? Here we go. 220 gigahertz, that's the speed. Pentium 4, one core. Here it is. That's the entirety of it. How much memory does it have on it? Oh my God, right? That's an MB. That is an MB there. Do you want to see how long it takes to update the watch window in Visual Studio? Let me show you. Do you see? It is instant. It takes no time. It updates immediately after you step. So the problem here is not just that the Visual Studio team doesn't know what they're doing. It's not just that they ignore me when I say that they don't know what they're doing. It's not just that they're taking incredibly fast hardware and making it slow. It's that they actually made it slower than it already was two decades ago. If they just hadn't updated the program, it would be faster today. So no, it's not that I'm unaware of the new features and speed of the latest version of Visual Studio. And no, it's not that I don't care to fill out an incident report. It's that nobody cares and the program sucks. And that's pretty much true of all the things I complain about on Twitter. <laughs>